Welcome to Nursing School Explained in this video on how to drop medication from a vial. In this case, I'm going to use Zofran, an anti-nausea medication, and the order is to administer four milligrams. So first of all, I need to make sure that I perform hand hygiene and use aseptic technique. So it's always best to do that and then put on some gloves. Then you gather your equipment wherever you get the medications from, medication card or most likely the Pixis. This is a multi-dose vial and make sure that you check and see what this says. So in this case I've labeled it here as Zofran or Ondansetron, 2 milligrams per ml. And because I need to administer 4 milligrams, I need to draw up 2 mLs. The best thing to do is always know how much volume you're going to need and then to pick an appropriate size syringe. So in this case, I need to draw up two mLs. So a three milliliter syringe is definitely appropriate. In this case, this syringe already comes with a needle attached. If I would just have the syringe, I would need to either attach a needle or use a, a medication straw or a um, needleless system to draw it out of the medication. And so because this vial is still capped, I need to uncap it. And although the cap was on there, it's always best practice to clean the rubber port here. So you can see there is the metal ring around and then the rubber port where I'm going to put in my needle. So I need to vigorously clean that for about 10 to 15 seconds to make sure I, use, I continue using a septic technique. And I need to draw up two milliliters. So after I've cleaned it, I'll just put it aside and I put my alcohol swab on top. That way nothing else can contaminate the top. Then I'll open up my syringe and I always need to add whatever amount of fluid I'm going to withdraw from the vial before I insert the needle. I need to add air to the syringe so that I can insert air because these vials are pressurized. And if it's a multi-dose vial, after many uses, if the pressure is not right, you might leak medication and actually lose some. So in this case, this is um, a syringe that can be used for injections. In this case, of course, I'm not gonna use it, but I'm going to draw up the two mLs so that I can insert the air. So I use the plunger and draw up the two mLs. I uncap my needle. I put the needle into that rubber stopper and then it's best if you put it all the way in and then turn it upside down. Move that needle back down to make sure the tip of the needle is sitting in the fluid but don't touch the needle with anything. You push the air in there and as soon as I let go of the plunger the medication is going to draw in here. Now, if you can see, there's a little bit of turbulent flow and then it stops going. So I can just pull the medication, pull the plunger down, which causes some turbulence. And you can see some air bubbles, especially on the very bottom there. So what I can do is I can kind of push the medication up and down, trying to pull and push, get rid of some of, this med some of these bubbles until I slowly go all the way down where the plunger is at those two mLs. There is a couple of tiny air bubbles. Now those don't really matter. The one I had in the beginning is important. Now as soon as I pull this out, I need to be careful not to contaminate myself or poke myself with this needle and then I can recap it. Remember that when we do recap the needle, you want to make sure you put your non-dominant hand somewhere behind you so that you're not um, pushing this and inadvertently hurting yourself. So put your non-dominant hand behind you, recap it, and then use some object like the vial to push that cap back on there. So now I have my four milligrams of Zofran in here and I'm ready to take it to my patient's room, but this liquid looks like any other liquid. So um, I can go ahead and use my nifty tape that's always around and label this with what's in the syringe. So I'll put Zofran, four milligrams, 
And I could even put the patient's name, date of birth, or name and medical record number on there. But what you should always do is put the time. So right now it's 11.52 a.m. and put your initials there. That way you know when you prepared it. And then stay away from um, putting this tape over the plunger where you can't see the volume. So put it either a little bit higher or lower. And you can put it on there and make this nifty little tab with it. That way it's labeled and you're ready to take it to your patient's room to administer the medication. I actually have a different video where I'm going to administer this medication to my patient IV push. So make sure that you watch that video too. Thanks for watching. See you at the next video.